bullshit. Excuse the expression, but that's what it is. Welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard, and I am joined by Simon. Hi, Simon. Suspiria is a hello? <laughs> a Suspiria says what? <laughs> a Giala says who? <laughs> Folks, speaking of not the director of Suspiria, we're talking about our boy, Lambava. The Mo Lambava. Mo better. It has been way too long since we've talked about one of his films. Yeah, I was... um. Listening to um, last night our uh, episode on Macabre, um, I told you this, done this before a few times, and this is going to sound a bit weird and narcissistic maybe to people, but you know, like syncing the our, our episodes as yeah. like commentaries, you know, after the film. And yeah, there's one I may have mentioned this before, sorry if I have. Um, Don't open till Christmas, which does not actually have a commentary, I think, on any of the releases. Our episode is pretty much exactly the same length I'm as the film, so you, dude. you know, if anybody puts a disc out, give us some money. Yeah, or don't. Like <laughs> we'll we'll do the first few for for on spec, you know, totally free. Sure. Will be great. Um, I just want to point out the thing that blew my mind immediately when I opened up <laughs> the old IMDb. Here is mm. he did Demons Two and this movie the same year. Yes, yes. I mean, they're okay. basically the same film. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, John Old Jr., <laughs> you <laughs> scamp. Uh, but yeah, folks, if you haven't seen You'll Die at Midnight, I want to give a shout out to uh, the Giallo Realm. Brian mm. over at Giallo Realm has on YouTube You'll Die at Midnight. Hopefully it's still going to be there by the time you hear this episode. Um, if not... You'll find it. You'll find it. Oh, it's out there. It's out there in the world. Um, I'm struggling to find a copy so <clears> I can <throat> grab some uh, freaking audio from it. <laughs> Did you hear that creepy piano just now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Lietta's cleaning the piano and it went, dumb. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's like the synth farts we're going to talk about in this freaking <laughs> score. <laughs> oh, love it. Uh, of course, the trailers for You'll Die at Midnight are complete dog shit, so I am going to skip the trailer portion and just read to you the quick synopsis from IMDb. You ready? Yeah. A fan who has an affair with one minor league baseball player each season meets an up-and-coming pitcher and the experienced catcher assigned to him. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's Bull, that's Bull Durham? <laughs> Starring everyone's favorite Giallo actor, Kevin Costner. <laughs> Although I would pay good money, dude, for Susan Sarandon in a Giallo. Come on. Yes, yes. I'd, I'd have her be in one now. Mm. She's she's a little crazy, but I like her. <laughs> uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, here we go. The real plot is a man becomes aware that his wife has been having an affair, resulting in a violent argument. Shortly afterward, she is murdered and he becomes the chief suspect. That's the first... <laughs> Eight minutes of the movie. All summed up. So yeah, we're in heavy, heavy, heavy Giallo territory here, kids. This is... Um... A movie. <laughs> uh, I guess we can just jump into it, because I, I really want to talk about um, my favorite line in the movie. And the sooner we start talking, 
the sooner we'll get to it, because that's how podcasts work. This opens up with uh, Claudio Simonetti's famous piece, Urgento Video Gameo Musica. <laughs> no, uh, this music starts off like video game music, and then it shifts into what I call pap smear funk pop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to uh, determine whether that's a compliment or not. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. Oh, because okay, okay. uh, I've never had a pap smear. I can't relate. I'm assuming they're right. friggin' awesome. <laughs> Just kidding, ladies. They suck. So... Um, I don't know why I'm telling women that something sucks sucks, but whatever. <laughs> it's called being a man, baby. Mansplaining. Yeah, I just mansplained. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> so there's this lady uh, walking through the streets <clears throat> of the Cité. Um, are we in Rome? Or is this a Roman? Where the heck was this made filmed? Made filmed? <laughs> this was filmed in Asialo Piceno, Marche, Italy. So we not we ain't in Rome. <laughs> Mm. Unless it's some, like, super, super obscure suburb <laughs> or something. <laughs> Let's see, where this, where does this, where does Google Maps take us? So, Marche region. Central Italy. Italy. Oh. It's near the coast, so that's why we have some nice coasty places in this. Mm. Yes. So, she's walking down the street, and um, she's being followed by a creepy guy. He He has his friend drop him off so he can follow her. And she goes right to the panties store, um, excuse me, undergarments store, <laughs> and uh, she wants to buy something to, quote, protect her feminine zones. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I put quotes around that. No one says that. <laughs> but this creepy guy is leering at her so much. It's like, oh. <laughs> he has this crooked smile that I do not trust at all. Oh, I was rereading your um I might have it to hand here, your um review and jello meltdown. Oh my <laughs> god. You were very complimentary about this guy's face. Do I have this here? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? His his dumb face is stuck into a horrible sneer. Maybe he was born like that. <laughs> Oh, I'm I'm nice. I'm nice to people. <laughs> Folks, Simon's reading from Giallo Meltdown, a movie thon diary, a book I wrote about watching too many Giallo movies. Available now on Amazon.com. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. What page was that review on? Uh that is on oh cue the uh the wah pedal, the sexy music. That's wow, on page wow. sixty nine. Oh baby. <laughs> Brad and I were just talking about the iguana with the tongue of fire, which was the first Giallo in the book. Yes. That's ridiculous. Oh, my God. So he's he's watching her uh, talk to the sales manager and get some freaking uh, some underpants. And then she goes to the uh, room to try on the clothes, the underclothes, which that's everyone's dream who works in retail is, oh, please, no, go try on the underwear. They have like the most discreet changing room as well, you know. <laughs> You basically see the the light behind her. Like, I'm surprised it's not like a clear shower curtain for the door. It may as well be. And um, <laughs> that's the point. I, unless I'm misremembering this. Isn't that kind of a similar scene in Body Double? I mean, without, you Ooh. know, what sort of happens next. I think. Dude, I have not seen Body Double for approximately 3,000 years. Oh, wow. It's probably time to watch it before it gets to the 4,000 year mark. Uh, so as he's watching her change, uh, he sees... Uh, a, a man join her, or presumably a man, in uh, mm. pan pantaloons and, and mm -hmm. uh, beautiful shiny shoes, and he's very upset. Um, he bumps into a guy, like he gets angry, bumps into a guy, and we see that he has a cop in his belt. And by cop, mm -hmm. I mean gun. Why did I write that? That's weird. <laughs> anyway, yes, he's he's actually a cop. He's got a gun on his belt, like men do. Mm. Or we just call them Texans here in Florida. <laughs> And uh, this is Nicola, uh, our pal Nicola, and he is played by uh, Leonardo Treviglio, who I don't know if I've ever seen before or yeah, since. I can't recognize him from somewhere, unless I'm thinking of... Oh, God. I'll tell you in a minute. I think he just looks like somebody else. Yeah, he's in a few things. Nothing I've seen. Uh, but his wife is played by Barbara Scopa. Hmm. And she's very lovely. She's actually in more stuff than he has been in. Mm. But once again, I'm scrolling like, uh, nope, don't know <laughs> you. Anyway, 
Uh, he bumps into my favorite character <laughs> in this movie, um, our pal Anna. Mm. Um, and she's credited as Anna slash criminal psychologist. <laughs> this is Valerie, uh, excuse me, Valeria de Obici. De mm. Obici. And um, ay, 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 this woman is, um, she's, she's very nice. Mm. I'm trying to think of something to, good to say about her. <laughs> she's very nice. She's perfectly capable in the role. I just find her not very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> she's a she's quite the snappy dresser in this though, I suppose, oh, isn't she? We can have a few things to say about some of the fashions. Um I also know who was supposed to play her. Oh right, yeah. And I'll save that for later. Uh, I'm I'm, sure I'm, I'm pretty sure if this person was gonna be in this movie, mm. she would have had um a much bigger role. But we'll mm. we'll talk about that when we get to that. Okay. Anyway, so he bumps into Anna and um he's so angry about the whole uh, seeing his wife in the changing room, he completely blows her off and just goes back home. Um, at home, uh, his wife is waiting. Oh, no, he's waiting for her when his wife... Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> his wife comes home to find him drinking and pissed at her. He accuses her of infidelity. Um, she implies that his dingle doesn't work. <clears throat> um, but she actually says uh, he's a mama's boy who only does it once a month. <clears throat> which... Um, you could also just call that being married. <laughs> <clears throat> Their arguing escalates, and uh, she stabs him with an ice pick because he, you know, he freaking slapped her. He decides to try to drown her in the dirty dishwater. Dirty dishwater. He tries to drown her in the dirty dishwater. It's a very <laughs> common thing that happens in marriages. Right before he kills her, he like, "I'm out of here, baby. Gotta go." And he says, um, quote, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. <laughs> uh, while she's uh, showering off the, the dirty dishwater, um, a killer sneaks in and stabs her to death with the ice pick through the, uh, the, the shower curtain. Which mm. I, The shower curtain is one of the most painful places on the human body to stab. <laughs> yeah, I'm a whore, but I make it with men who are good in bed and not with a mama's boy who can only do it once a month. You shut up, damn you! <laughs> and then we see Anna, our psychologist at work. She's given some guy a weird test. He's a fellow psychologist that she has hooked up to a machine. I guess it's a therapeutic device. Probably something from the future that doesn't exist in 1986. And uh, this is a theme here. He immediately asks her to dinner. Um, he's like, hey, let's go to dinner. She's about to say yes, but she remembers two things, Simon. One, his favorite restaurant is Shoney's. Shoney's America's dinner table. Two, he's married. So I think if he had taken her to Olive Garden, things would have been fine. But no, he suggested Shoney's. Yeah, that kind of put an end to that very quickly. See, I knew you'd find that funny because your familiarity with American restaurants in the 1980s is very, very solid, bruh. I'll tell you where they should have gone. Hmm. Flavortown. <laughs> <laughs> yes or fucking wendy's <laughs> <laughs> hit up that salad bar they could have bumped into uh <laughs> donald pleasance <laughs> oh did somebody share that recently on yes. one of the groups something where uh, <laughs> donald pleasance got to the drive through at wendy's <laughs> oh my god <laughs> sir this is a wendy's <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so um after he leaves, Anna sits down to relax. She eats some floppy churros. Oh, just um, with a big glass oh, of milk. Oh. What's that? Churros? Is that what it is? Oh, I, I, I have a note about that. But first, before he leaves, they say some uh, interesting things. Oh, let's hear it. Because uh, I guess calling forward to you know what happens soon, and you know she typically you know rather than taking the kind of cop explanation of you know you say following the facts, she more gives kind of the benefit of the doubt and says oh no and in this case whoever they're talking about says i couldn't tell the fuck she was saying this says he was in the midst or midst even of eruptus <laughs> thank whatever you for the, picking whatever that is up whatever the fuck that is i'm looking it up on wiktionary now what's this bro broken out i don't oh, i don't even know dude maybe it was a, a psychological problem <laughs> I, I guess so. It's, it sounds like kind of Freudian or something. But um, oh yeah, well, 
So before, when he's trying to um, arrange the dinner date or what have you, I think she says to him, what is it? Oh, you're not trying to warm up that old soup, are you? <laughs> oh, my God. He's got a big old cup of dude soup waiting for her. <laughs> oh, my God. How about having dinner with me this week? And what would your wife say? Oh, well, it's not a crime to have dinner with an old classmate, is it? You're not trying to warm up that old soup, are you? <laughs> well? I'll think about it. Yeah, you saying she has milk and do you say churros? I thought they were carrots, or maybe I just thought they were oh because I've, I've got a note here about. And this is only going to make sense to anybody who is really fond of the um, kind of, um, shall we say, some interesting parts of mid season two of Twin Peaks, which I'm currently rewatching. Oh so do, if she's on milk and carrots, she's on the post Civil War Ben Horn diet. Yeah. Because I think that's when he gives up his cigars. That's what he uh, turns to favor. Turns into Bugs Bunny. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I love it. Um, so Nicola shows up, he's very distraught and he, he begs her for help. And, uh, we cut to our pal, Paolo Malco, one of my favorite people. He's Inspector Piero, uh, Paolo Malco, uh, New York Ripper and House by the Cemetery. Guess he passed away a few years ago. No, he's still alive. According to... He just is retired, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to see his last uh, credit was. One thing you picked up on this. I, you know, he's normally dubbed by pretty much always the same guy. I forget who, what his name is now. But you know where they had one of those kind of matches, those wonderful matches where they just found like the perfect dubbing artist for him. Yes. And he's almost always dubbed by the same guy. I think it's someone different here and it kind of threw me slightly, but, yeah. you know, get used to it. It's kind of novel, I suppose. Who's the guy... Who dubs? Uh, I'm not gonna remember his name. Um, just a moment. I gotta look this up. I haven't seen this guy in a movie in a while, so I can't remember his freaking name. Al Cliver. Oh yeah. I yeah. always think about the dude who dubs Al Cliver in Zombie Two. Mm. And whenever that actor, that voice actor, is dubbing someone else, it completely takes me out of the movie <laughs> because I'm like, how could Al Cliver let him slip? through mm. his fingers and it's weird because once in a while imdb will have the voice actors is it so i'm just looking this up is it nick Al nick alexander who dubbed him that's it just this is a trivia thing on al cliver's imdb page it's coming saying often dubbed in english by voice actor nick alexander but i don't oh, know whether that. that's right though um, i could be wrong he doesn't really it's just so frustrating because he has like 12 credits mm. you know versus a hundred and <clears throat> He's cre credited as an ADR and a dubbing editor a lot. Yeah. So maybe. But yeah, I could see that. But his voice is so distinct that, that mm. I always mm. see a movie with him and I'm like, whoa, it's Rockhead. <laughs> well, it sounds like Rockhead. Paolo Malco, he's a detective. So Anna gets the call that um, Nicola's wife has been murdered. And of course, she should be a famous poker player because she's really good at hiding uh, mm. the news that like is screaming across her face. <laughs> <laughs> we find out that um, Anna and Nicola used to be in love. She's like, why don't you leave? Because he's, he, he needs a place to stay. And she says, oh, no, thank you. So now our, our pal Nicola is the prime suspect because if you watch any, you know, true <clears throat> crime shows, it's always the wife. I mean, it's always, sorry. No. It's always the husband. And that's should be just the name of all the crime shows. It's always no. the husband. <laughs> apparently men are more prone to violence but who knew so um someone is stalking and snooping at the the files at what i assume is either a museum a creepy science lab or a college it's really not clear or it's the psychologist's office i don't know what this place is yeah, it's like why either I mean, you make sense they've got all the like casts of like murder victims and stuff, but then so much of it is just like a fucking natural history museum. It's like what's going on? Yeah, dinosaur bones. <laughs> Unless it's like just a university where you I think you, <laughs> you can probably relate to this, I don't know, but I gather um you know, there's probably a lot well I I remember this. We're just even struggles for getting classrooms and stuff, so I think there's departments where <laughs> we end up literally <laughs> merging like that. Yes. It's the uh it's the maths gym gymnasium. <laughs> Uh, so the, this this mysterious individual goes on a computer and starts changing and deleting records, which, uh, Simon, you know what that means. Hack the planet! Hack the planet! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Hacker Planet! So Inspector Piero uh, is now asking Anna about why Nicola killed. And uh, they go to a deli where they're in the middle of eating and he wants to take her to dinner. <laughs> and of course, she knows his favorite place is the Sizzler Steakhouse. So she says, no, thank you. Well, where to for lunch? I know where I want to go for lunch. I don't want to spend a lot of money. Not fast food. Fast food, definitely not fast food. But I don't want to spend a lot of time. So where to? Sizzler. Yeah. So where to for lunch tomorrow? Hmm. How about Paris? Paris? For lunch? I don't want to spend a lot of money. The steak. Seafood. Salad. Apparently he's been weird since the divorce. He's been a douchebag and uh, not fun to be around since the divorce. Uh, but she tells him there's a maniac on the loose, but she doesn't think it's Nicola. She's like, no way, dude. And of course, Nicola is following her around. The, he's following her around the city in their cars. And we get the uh, almost up to 20 miles per hour car chase. <laughs> I was very concerned for the safety of the stunt actors during this moment. Is this after the appearance of um, when she spies him in the mirror in her apartment, which I love how that's used, by the way, in our oh, stage, because, yeah. you know, it has the stairwell. So a lot of it's done in one shot with like these high and low angles. Um, it's like you can see sort of through the staircase, can't you? I think there's like a, a window. Yeah. The, the weird thing about this apartment she has is it reminds me of um, the interior of the the house in Tenebre. Oh, yeah. Where they yeah, film all that. around the you know, outside, but it has that weird hallway uh, stairwell that has all the window glass in it. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, in case you wanted privacy in your bedroom too late, the person on the stairs is staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's a really cool scene. Mm. So, we cut to some psycho psychological students, some psychology mm. students uh, talking crimes. They're talking about a criminal named... They only say his name about nine billion times. Yeah, I've forgotten now. Uh, his name is Franco Trevo or something like that. Tre Trebo? Tybo. <laughs> tree bro. <laughs> his tree bro. Uh, they're talking about his crimes and they have a cast of a nude woman's torso. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about how this was all they found of this one victim because the this this particular killer, I don't know if they're talking about the same guy, but this guy ate part of her. And I was like, that's torso, okay? <laughs> milk bread and eggs <laughs> and lara wendell's here dude mm. lara wendell is this is so confusing in the english dub version she is carol she's like his daughter she literally calls him daddy a hundred times imdb has her as carol slash piero's wife <laughs> what oh yeah what? Oh, That's man. a... No wonder he's upset. He's freaking committing incest all the time. <laughs> no, what? What? Because <laughs> we never see them, like, have any moments together that would imply anything weird. It makes me wish I'd... If I had time, I would have done, but um, I, I checked out a very brief bit of the... Um italian track as well just to kind of compare a couple of the lines see if they were different yeah but no i didn't pick up any of that so bizarre we got lara wendell she's one of the students um and she's joined by uh julia or gioia and she's joined by her pal monica and i i just i just love lara wendell she's i like her when she's dubbed i love her in post dubbing era italian horror she is in ghost house <laughs> Yes, and she has all the funniest lines in that movie and being of german descent growing up in italy and speaking english her accent is crazy oh yeah it's, it is oh. singular isn't it yep. I, i'm glad uh we picked up on the so i was wondering about this yesterday i might as well say this now since later in the movie so i'm gonna forget otherwise yeah i thought she was born in germany because there's a line when they check into the hotel later what does she say you know, because the hotel's abandoned and all of that. Um, yeah. But something about just like, yeah, it's really busy, it's like full of people. It's in, Laura Wendell says Germans, I bet. <laughs> Which I thought, that's kind of curious. Friggin' Germans. <laughs> Still in the sunbeds. That's right. 
trying to trying to freaking do it up. Get get bronzed. <laughs> so they're talking about their 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 psychology stuff. They reference mm. the Midnight Killer, like they actually mm. do the one of the title drops because you know this is Yule Die at Midnight, Midnight Killer, etc. So they are fully aware, and this this guy's crimes were very famous, and of course he supposedly died in a fire. We cut to the synthesizers interrupting the film <laughs> to show us all the creepy stuff in the museum. And this is one of the most pivotal scenes in the movie, dude. This girl that works at the museum, she leaves, and Nicholas, like, snoops a little bit and sees her. Dude. Pivotal. This this is like where the, when they introduce a character, but then they're a non-character. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, lady. Bye, lady. I, I, bye, lady. And I do mm-hmm. want to talk about how this film is different from a lot of other Lamberto Bava movies at the end of this. And I feel like there's little things like this that are going to add up to it. Anyway, the inspector is, is bitter and whiny about chairs. So they're. <laughs> moving- oh, sorry. Just before you pick that up, but we mentioned the other mystery at the moment that he's, he's, he's on the hunt for something, <laughs> which, will be, which again will be pivotal later. Yes. He's looking for his fricking pipe. And of course mm. it's quote unquote, for tobacco use only. Oh, of course. <clears throat> no, he's looking for his bong. Let's just say he's looking for his bong. <laughs> no, they're they're rearranging the entire police station for remodeling or they're moving, and he's being such a whiny little bitch about the freaking furniture. <laughs> Where's the chairs? Where are the chairs? Chairs! <laughs> <laughs> so the killer, we eventually get back to the, the mystery woman who worked at the museum, and the killer goes after her in broad daylight like in the street Mm. instead of running down the street towards like people she runs into the grand old opry the freaking abandoned um opera house which thank god she did dude oh yeah this place reminds me so much of the one in four flies on gray velvet yes yes because it has like same note it's a little run down Mm. and there's like a big space where you walk down into the pit, like the little orchestra mm. pit and everything, or or underneath it, it's like, man, what is going on here? Yeah, it does feel almost identical. I don't know whether it is or it just it's of the same <laughs> kind of telepidate style. It's like the instant atmosphere when she walks in this mm. place. Mm. Um, so Killer chases her and finally uh, gets her with the old ice pick. Yeah. And we have the first instance of implied sexual mutilation of the victim. Mm. which i find very tasteless because around this same time uh the films about the venetian not the venetian um is this the one that's i've never seen it and i should do eventually but i think i'm gonna have to kind of steal myself for it is this just from the same year as uh, the killer is still among us yes they did the killer they did the killer is still among us the monster of florence god damn. there you go yes the mm. monster of florence killings yeah, they did mm. two movies or three movies. They're both surprisingly good. Mm. Both of the ones I'm thinking of. I can't think of the other one. It was mo- it was the- one was called The Monster of Florence and yes, and the other one was called The Killer Still Among Us. I recommend yeah. them both. They were both surprisingly good. And they're only really tasteless because the crimes were still going on mm. when those movies yeah. were made. They were hot and in the news. Well, you know, Italians, God love them. They do like to jump on the proverbial bandwagon, don't they? Yes. <laughs> More ways yes. than once. So. Exactly. But um, that's, again, I may as well mention this now before I'm liable to forget. I haven't really been able to find any trivia about this. It's just a minor note on the Wikipedia page. Mm. A quote from Lambarba, which I think this is a quote from Troy Howis, one of his Jalo books. Um, saying he later stated he was uneasy making these types of films, stating that I find doing scenes where women get stabbed to death repugnant dario argento does it so well but i feel sick as soon as i see the knife in the murderous hand which explains a lot of those some nice yeah. kind of restraint in how some of the scenes in era staged even you know like the shower bit earlier oh yeah you never see the knife actually stab her you never even see any like wounds on her they're very careful not to show that that's interesting the mall and baba more better yeah. so where were we we were talking about the victim getting killed the implied vigilance. Vagi- oh my god, thank you. I forgot about that wonderful term. 
credit to you and Brad for that. We uh, we have uh, a scene where Anna and uh, Lara, Wendell, Carol are talking about uh, the Midnight Killer. We get some more details about his crimes and how he's uh, supposedly he died in a fire at a insane asylum, which she still works at and has been uh, restored since, which is the museum college slash whatever the fuck. <laughs> Slash zoo. This has a dude in it, though. This is, So we meet the theater watchman. Yes. And it's our boy, Giampaolo Saccarola. I'm probably yes. butchering that name. It's like, wait a minute. How do we know this guy? We know this guy because he's always l- l- looking for keys. Which keys? <gasps> what? This is Arthur um, from The Beyond and... He was also the library dude uh, in House by the Cemetery. I love this guy. Mm, so was, we get a little reunion here, don't we? He was the coroner in Tenebre. Mm. Dude, this guy's so great. I love this dude. Yeah. So he didn't do enough. He's such an interesting looking guy. He died really young, didn't he? I think. Yeah, 39. Oh, my God. No wonder he quit. Jeez. Life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He retired from living. So, oh boy, we have one of my favorite tropes in a giallo, which is they theorize the killer must be a sex maniac. <laughs> of course, it's like Natch. Um, so Anna, this is where we see Anna um, hallucinating the the face of the killer in her apartment. She sees a good old Trevo watching her. I got ahead there. And then we have my favorite bit of dialogue where Anna and Piero, the detective are arguing over who's guilty of these crimes. Mm. Because, you know, um, Nicola's out there on the streets, and then a, there's this, like, you know, could be the same guy. Could be Trevo, Tybo, Franco, mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. the grave. And he says, bullshit! Excuse the expression, but that's what it is. <laughs> In fact, this whole exchange is my favorite shit from the movie. Mm. It is so funny, him and her back and forth. And he immediately is like, I need a drink. (laughs) She's like, would you like a whiskey? And he says, yes, but it's not J&B. There's no J&B in this movie. No, no, there isn't. Yeah, I was looking for that. So, yeah. It's some weird squarish bottle that I don't know what it is. Mm. It looks tasty. Mm. Oh, is this uh, where they're having this debate? And I forget whether uh, is God, I've forgotten her name now. Laura Wendell's character. Um, Carol. Carol. There we go. Thanks. She's in the room as well. I forget. But at any rate, uh, lots of notes on this, on the, the fashions. Yeah, she's rocking kind of a uh, ensemble. She's got like a lab coat, a, a yellow shirt, a leather skirt, I think. <laughs> yeah. She's her very, uh, her yeah. look in this is crazy. Like, like um, are you talking about Anna or are you talking about Carol? Oh, Anna. And uh, yeah, Carol yeah. at some point as well is rocking the uh, the, the giallo. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of it dotted about, like in the apartment right at the beginning where they're having the domestic. There's like a lot of, you know, nice trim. Nice. And mm. what else is it? There's like a wall. <laughs> Come <laughs> like on. Like a wall-sized mural of Marilyn Monroe and just like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's crazy. No, I love, um, I think Alara Wendell is wearing like a brown pantsuit. Yes. And it's yeah. so, and her hair is not great. Like, she just doesn't look like herself in this at all. It's really funny. Yeah, she's wearing a necklace, which I think is just like colored string as well. It's Ooh. like, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's different. Man, I, I, I have one of those. <laughs> I'm wearing it right now, but not around my neck. <laughs> so we have a uh, cut to the dinosaur bones where uh, Carol is sketching. And of course, she's being stalked. Uh, she gets creeped out and tries to leave, but the doorman of this, or the uh, security guard of this school, college, museum, is like, sorry, the door's locked. Sorry. You better hurry. You're going to be locked in here forever, dumbass. Mm-hmm. He's so not helpful. And uh, she finds a, she left her watch behind, and she goes to get her watch, and the killer has tied a package, or a parcel, if you will, to her watch that has a note that's in Italian and no idea what it says. Mm. And it might just say her name, but it's got the ice pick wrapped in uh, like uh, some butcher's paper or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. 
just falls out and just like lands like, straight and they the the yeah the timing that is just spawn oh yeah it's it's as rigid as i am right now <laughs> and uh she sees good old trevo tybo franco like staring at her and she tries to escape uh she cr- tries to call her dad or her husband depending on <laughs> if you believe i am db or not oh, uh, and man. then she gets spooked by a cleaning lady who looks um like a real cleaning lady i don't think they cast yes. this character mm. <laughs> she looks like the like the romanian uh slave the italians apparently still keep romanian slaves <laughs> i don't know Apparently. what i'm talking about but i'm glad i said it out loud yeah more importantly simon we recorded it yes presumably <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is one of our freestyle episodes folks where we don't record it <laughs> we we would be on like episode 700 by now if if only we'd recorded the other 600 should we just say balls to the plumber start beatboxing instead did you say balls to the plumber i think i said plot but i might have said plumber okay <laughs> So her dad tells her to just straight up to leave town, but he says something really weird. He says, like, don't tell me where you're going. Mm. And I don't know why he says it. Does he think the phone's being bugged? I guess that's the only thing that would make sense. Why the fuck would a cop not want to know where his child is or wife? Yeah. Or just like, at least just, you know, leave me a note or something. Or I, yeah, I don't know. He's yeah. uh, He's got his own MO, does, does Paolo, I think. In this. That's right. Paolo's MO. <laughs> so they, they head off to the seashore um, for a quote unquote studying party. And I said in my notes, are they studying each other's anatomy? Wow, wow, wow. I'm, I'm kidding. There was no sexing this year. Unfortunately. <laughs> With our pal. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> There's a cop watching Anna's place and he hears her screaming. So he comes a running and uh, we got Nicola attacking her with a knife mm. and they totally shoot his ass to death. With a gun mm-hmm. and bullets. Yes. She still insists that uh, our pal Trevo Tybo Franco is still alive. She believes they shouldn't have shot Nicola because he was innocent, even though he's waving a big ass butcher knife at her. So um, back at the panties store, aka undergarments for covering your feminine zones, mm-hmm. the killer goes after the sales lady who had been there, uh, excuse me, salesperson. And um, he walks in after they're closed because, you know, why would you lock the door if your store is closed? And he does the creepiest moment in the movie, dude. Oh, God, yeah. His whispering is, this voice actor is so good. He's like, I'm here to get something for my wife. Mm -hmm. And it's like, do what? I'm sorry, what? I'm here to get something for my wife. And she's like, sir, could you speak up? He's like, I'm here to get something for my wife. (laughs) So it's less creepy when he speaks up. Okay, that part didn't actually happen, but I'm glad I said that. Um, he starts harassing her with a tiny baby knife. <laughs> He's not feeling very confident, so he only flicks his knife out a little bit. <laughs> he orders her to strip, but he's too impatient. And then he uh, shoves panties, hopefully clean, in her mouth to death. Do they do the, another uh, implication of uh, the body bears uh, evidence of carnal violence? I don't think so. I think then they just cut back to the hotel after that. But mm. um, yeah, I, I, it's one of these scenes in this where I haven't seen in a long time. And it's like, I can't believe I'd forgot about this. It's uh, Yeah, it's again, it's certainly novel. Like another um, death scene, which we'll come to later, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, brother. So the girls, uh, you know, Carol and company, which I think was a TV show, uh, they arrive at the house by the sea. And um, they start they they start organizing the chore schedule, and I wrote <laughs> in my notes, fascinating. <laughs> what does one of them say? So they don't I forget now, but so they just don't don't start getting bitchy or whatever. Oh my god, it's so it's so funny. I say we ought to take turns, a day for each of us. One of us can do the cooking, and then the other. There she goes again. Relax, we only just got here. If we don't organize ourselves, we'll begin being bitchy and probably fight. And that there is a f- uh, a male friend of theirs who also, I keep forgetting to talk about him because he's just so exciting. Oh, is this? Uh, I got his name wrong. Alberto. First, remember, yeah, he's, Alberto. That's I it. I believe uh, he's played by Marcello Madungo, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sorry, Madunio Madungo. Um, he was also in uh, Demons. He was one of the guys in the horror movie. 
Oh yeah, a yeah. Movie within a movie. That's pretty cool. He's in something else I've been meaning to watch for years now. Uh, Dial Help. Oh, me too. I haven't seen that. Mm. Been saving that for uh, Giallo Meltdown because mm. even though it does not sound like a Giallo at all, it's uh, apparently yeah apparently a Giallo because it keeps getting referred to it. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. if you insist. Alberto's busy. He's uh, he's at home. He didn't join the girls. Oh, that's why I'm bringing him up because he's in the next scene. He is a. Uh, Watching his neighbor do her jazzercise routine through through binoculars. Yes. Uh, she's not using binoculars. He's using them to watch her. Yeah, again, file under scenes. I can't believe I've forgotten about. Um, and the soundtrack, the um, song that you catch a little snatch of in the background. Yeah, I think I sent you a link to this. What is it? It says, performed by Casso, written by good old Claudio Simonetti. Oh, before I forget, he, uh, shout oh out to Claudio, God. he turned 70 earlier this week, I think. Oh! Good for in him. fact, That's I think awesome. a week ago today. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I recognize this, though, the little um, piano bit. I'm sure from Ghost House. I could be wrong. He does. I swear he reuses some music from something else later. I, I'll, I'll mark it. I mark it in my notes when it happens, actually. Speaking of the main theme, I think it's a piece called Out of Time. From I mainly recognized it from the Demon soundtrack. It's not used in the film, though. I think it was just on the soundtrack oh. album. Gotcha. So yeah, they're implying that Alberto's kind of creepy, and uh, we'll have another moment with him later where it's like, "Oh, what are you doing here?" Yeah. So the the killer comes after the girls, uh, but it turns out to be a nightmare sequence that our pal Monica is having. Oh, I love this. Hmm. Monica is played by Eliana Miglio, and she was in also in Demons. Gosh, she's actually has a pretty good career, actually. Well, it's always a good sign when you have a profile picture on IMDb, you know. <laughs> yes, this person exists. Oh, she's in the movie, in the movie, uh, in Demons as well, right? She's the woman in the tent, apparently. Oh, cool! Look at that. So that this is the movie within the movie within this movie. <laughs> this dream sequence. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all very matter, isn't it? Monica comes downstairs and talk about a scene where your friends are being completely real with you. <laughs> And I don't know how to take this. I would not know how to take this. Uh, one of her friends says, you look like you spent the whole night with the football team. <laughs> it's like, I look like I had sex with like seven to ten men. <laughs> what is it? Thank you. Do I look Yikes. overtired and satisfied or traumatized? <laughs> what are you trying to imply? Mm. What are you trying to imply? So uh, we see the blender. This is like um, Chekhov's blender. You can't show a blender in a movie without it being used in a murder later. Wonderful fake out nightmare scene. She's before that. She's reading a I guess it's meant to be like a Jalo paperback that's just called Blood, which I think I sent you this picture. Apparently, it's they've reused the uh, Italian poster for Blood Simple for this. Yes, yes, they did. Weird. I love it. I love that freaking recycled artwork. Yes. Oh, <gasps> oh shit. Oh, someone else likes recycled artwork. <laughs> and the killer is among us. Yeah. <laughs> so um we cut to the cops theorizing about the killer and uh piero is he's totally convinced because he had dated the girl who worked in the store and now this his daughter's been threatened and you know anna's been threatened so he's like obviously he's challenging me yeah and he says okay Let's go hunt some ghosts. <laughs> and I said, Ooh, Simon. <laughs> I said, Oh, who are you going to call? <laughs> Lambaba. <laughs> Lambaba Busters, baby. The more Lambaba, more better. So while her pals are out jogging, uh, Monica's alone. And uh, the killer comes after her. He's stalking her in the kitchen. And more importantly, though, this is when. Simonetti uses his freaking uh, farts and burps setting. All right, yeah. It's supposed to be a heartbeat, yeah, I think, yeah. but it sounds like a poop beat. That synth poop. <laughs> man, I should have freaking uh, coined that phrase, man. I'd be rich by now because I've said it at least three times. Give it a few years, it'll be a full genre like fucking vaporwave or like whatever <laughs> else. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. I'm telling you, give it time. Oh, boy. Never bring a knife to a mixer fight. Oh, no. Uh, she tries. She's, the killer does stab her once, but she 
grabs the mixer, which is um, not intimidating on any <laughs> known universe. Like, it would suck to get your fingers caught in it, sure, but I don't think it would hurt you. Well, you might, uh, unfortunately, you might die laughing. I don't know, possibly. <laughs> oh my god, that's it. She's trying to kill him with laughter. Mm. She should have tried kindness. <laughs> so the thing that they made with the mixer is a fruit smoothie with lumps in it. Uh, I don't uh. know what the fuck is going on. Uh, but she doesn't have enough cord. Um, she should have used the fifth cord. <laughs> Giallo. Uh, and of course, the mixer comes unplugged, and that seals her fate. She stabs. Uh, she, she gets she gets stabbed. Oh, Freudian slip. Mm-hmm. She gets stabbed by the killer. And dies, and then he takes the mixer to her hoo-ha, as I wrote in my notes. <laughs> then he pours the weird fruit cocktail all over the place and steals the body. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, weird, he's, weird, weird. he's got a very singular ammo, doesn't he? Yes. Especially in this case, jeez. Uh, he comes back and, uh, um, excuse me. The jogging girls come back and Monica is missing. And all I can think of is a movie Leah and I just watched for the 50,000th time called Noises Off. Oh. And I can hear John Ritter in my head. A young woman is missing. That is so weird you mentioned this. You know, I said I, and I listened to all of it in the end. It was only a short episode, the uh, Macabre episode. Yes. Uh, like I said, that's commentary with the film. And yeah, I think you mentioned this in there. Dude. With, see, oh, that was it. We were talking about Michael Caine, and then I said, <laughs> Yes! What's that, Dad? You have got people. You've got to see Noises Off. It is criminally underrated as far as like being one of the greatest comedies ever made. I really do. It I mean, is it's so funny. It must be four years since we did that episode, maybe, and I said, yeah, just watch it. Then I still not watched it. Dude, don't, don't tell Brad note. you haven't seen it. Brad, okay. I think that's in Brad's top three favorite films ever made period wow. wow yeah he okay he told me about it and i had luckily already seen it like i'd already been on the train because lietta it's a favorite of lietta's it's so good fantastic oh just before the um electric whisk vaginas and all of that did it um these i think uh palo's pipe finally turned up didn't it Oh, jeez. But I got a note here saying, oh, fuck, that's not what you smoke in a bowl. <laughs> he found it and it's packed full of that freaking uh, purple sticky punch. <laughs> it's got that Wish. dank cush all up in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So the girls are, are creeped out and they want to leave, but the car keys are gone. And they suspect that Monica has the car keys. So uh, Carol uh, calls daddy, not husband, not hubby. Um, but before she can finish telling him where they are, they cut the phone line, and then they lock shit down. They pull those big metal shutters that I wish I had from my house. You seem to have these everywhere in Italy. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, dude. It's Storm and Norman over there. Oh, right. Okay. I don't know. That makes sense. Maybe. Huh. Uh, so. so then the killer cuts the power to the lights and the soundtrack, <laughs> which I love. Yes. Um, we were just talking about this, uh, Brad and I were, about um, Iguana with the Tongue of Fire. The same thing happens there. The killer cuts the power and the soundtrack cuts out with it. Oh, brilliant. It's pretty neat. Um, they light a fire, but the, the, the flume is broken, so the smoke is billowing into the house. So they have to open the window. And when they go to open the window, uh, they find dead Monica. And someone's banging on the window. Banging, 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 banging. And Carol has a run-in with the killer upstairs because she volunteers to go shut the window. And this is when we find out that the killer is Nightcrawler from the X-Men mm-hmm. who can teleport. <laughs> this scene happens so fast. She fights off the killer. He drops his knife and runs. And by the time she processes what has just happened to her, her buddy, uh, Gioia, is downstairs getting murdered by the killer. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy. This uh, whole murder is another um, kind of nicely restrained but stylishly sort of done. It's, it's kind of all done in silhouette, isn't it? I think. Yes, it's very cool. I like that. Mm. Interestingly enough, uh, Leah Martino, who plays uh, Gioia, she was in a couple of cool things. Um, she was in a weird, obscure, I think, erotic giallo called Dark Bar, which I I know I've seen it, but I cannot remember it at all. Mm. Uh, she was in Graveyard Disturbance. Oh man, I still need to see that. Oh yeah, it's 
shockingly good. I was not expecting it to be as fun as it is. It's not great, but dude, it's it's a lot of fun. Excellent. Um, so she gets killed, and then this is where I think Simonetti is reusing some of his old music. This music cue mm. during this this like fighting the killer sequence sounds really strange to me because they're playing it really quietly. Yeah. And it's so I'm thinking maybe it was like from a few years before this movie. Yeah, it's hard to say. Sure. I had that earlier when there was a sting in that I was like, is that from Demons or Body Count? It's just like something of that yeah. era. <laughs> hey, these these guys always reuse stuff. The one thing I was surprised about this is didn't have that that one I always associate, that piece of music I always associate with Phil Mirage. Yes, yes. Which is that wow, 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 keyboard setting that everybody <laughs> had. It, came, it must have come with the synthesizer because I've heard that. I've heard that in American <laughs> films the from the same era. It's ridiculous. Right. If I can isolate that, huh. I will do that. I mean, it's just, I will drop that in. I always talk that. about doing it, but then finding in these movies where that moment is, is a pain in the butt. Anyway, uh, so so dad's en route while uh, Carol's having her, her chase scene. Apparently they were able to trace the phone call that lasted eight seconds. <laughs> uh, but Carol's out in the fog, and it's really cool because this vacation... Um, island paradise place is completely empty oh i love it like there's yeah. not even anyone working in these hotels i do love a uh, a hotel in a movie it's one of those tropes and yeah especially an isolated uh, sort you. of you know obviously puts in mind of the shining and a little bit of um of dots of darkness as well i guess so i know that's kind of still half yeah. running nice uh the uh she plays some hide and seek in the cabanas mm. with a little ha- the little houses for changing um, she hides under a big pile of um, soiled uh, bathing suits. Okay, no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, that's one of my erotic fantasies. Um, she's trying to find some help in the ghost town. And then um, Anna shows up. And Anna's looking for everybody. And so does our pal Alberto. He's acting real suspicious. He's slinking around. He's got brown, weird um, driving gloves that he's like constantly touching and like tightening so it looks really really suspicious then um anna gets attacked we hear her scream and alberto pulls carol aside and says don't go near her anna's the killer anna's the killer and carol does not believe him at all she's like this bullshit yeah she doesn't react well i think it's you know before when... <laughs> Yeah, that is the tone of it, and it's like a dad or a husband, maybe, before when he's freaking out. That's bullshit, you know, she really kind of overreacts, just calling him an idiot and everything. There you go, yes, flipping the gender roles here. Mm. So uh, he gets stabbed by our pal Trevo Tybo Franco. Luckily, he doesn't die. I was very sad that Alberto was getting killed, but he survives. And uh, then Dad shows up and blows the killer away. Mm. Blam, 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 blam. Shoot first, ask questions later. Damn and it's, right. that's like, uh, although the the face doesn't explode, it put me in mind of, there's a bit of kind of inversion of, um, you know, he he's the psychologist in New York Ripper and all of that, but it's kind of like roles reversed here. And it, you saying about like gender roles reversed, this is kind of also like a, a flip in the end of Blade, a Blade in the Dark on its head, sort of. Yeah, absolutely. Good call. Yeah, this is, this is the un-Blade in the Dark for multiple reasons. Yeah. We find out that Anna was indeed the killer. Um, why she was the killer is because before the insane asylum burnt down, um, he had actually attacked her and raped her, and it had driven her insane. But not so crazy that she didn't think to try to cover her crimes, yeah. because she was the one who had broken into the workplace, which you don't need to do if you work there, <laughs> and deleted the file. She like deleted something out of the files, which would have been helpful. We could have read that in Italian. And the credits roll at for Lambava to roll credits at eighty four minutes, eighty five minutes is a miracle. I can't believe this movie is so short for him. The Mo Lambava, Mo Beta. Um. But, oh yeah, we did have a reference to that pipe. Yes. Yes. He. I believe he mentions that stupid bong one more time. Do we even see it? <laughs> like like se- full, seriously do we even see this quote-unquote pipe he's been talking about i don't remember it no i think it's just only kind of referred to um, i'm gonna because we never see it i'm gonna choose to believe it's the dick pipe from new york ripper <laughs> i would smoke that 
<laughs> That's all I smoke. Ten out of ten would smoke that. <laughs> <laughs> ten out of ten would smoke that dick. <laughs> But um, he he says I think basically she sends him the pipe back when he's he's figured out who it is. Right. Although why he's not on it to sort of chase down earlier. And again, file under you know fucking our case in point of things I'd forgotten about because it'd been that long. Um, the ending and the Scooby Doo reveal literally, which oh there's yes. a there's a funny note about this on the it's not the, there's no trivia on IMDb but on Goof so that I have to read this now. Please. Because it's always just fun taking the piss out of IMDb under revealing mistakes. When the inspector takes off the mask, not off, uh, from murderous face, it's very clear it wasn't on the shot before and that the murderous seen through the whole movie was that of a real man. Well, thank you for that. Wow. Yeah, thanks, you freaking jackass. <laughs> of course. <laughs> He's not going to rip the, the actor's face off to prove it with a <laughs> skull underneath the whole time. I said recently there was a, a riff on... Um, on Scooby Doo, on you know the the where I think Velma literally pulls somebody's face off. It's like on my face, and it's like I'm bleeding on the floor. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's mm. messed up. Um, let's see things we didn't mention uh, trivia wise. Uh, this is a uh, Dar- Dardano Sacchetti uh, wrote this with uh, Lambaba, of course. You know he of nearly a hundred freaking mm. screenplays. One of the um. Uh, assistant directors was freaking Fabrizio Bava, which I kind of forgot that this person exists. This is a uh, Lumberto Bava's son. Right. So he would be, uh, um, that would be grandpava. He grandsona. I'm looking at some of his credits. He says he was for one thing. He was a second unit director on Zoolander two, an American assassin. Wow. He's a, Oh, and house of Gucci. Yeah. He's still working, dude. Has he done anything but second unit? Um, some writing, some directing. He's mainly seems he's a first yeah. assistant director now. Um, Did some TV stuff. Red Lobster brings back seafood trios. One, two, three. Your favorites from the sea. Six irresistible seafood trios starting at six ninety five. One, two, three. Seafood trios only for a few weeks. Only at Red Lobster. That's all good. I'm hitting record. In all oh, the right in all the I'm right places. Getting distracted by the dog to spare with me. Good. Uh, another person involved in this is Gian Lorenzo Battaglia. Yes. And he is the cinematographer on this bad boy. Who uh dude, this career is nice. Mm. So he shot uh, Delirium in eighty seven. I think he was was he Lambava's like go to DP of this certainly this era, I think. Yeah, he shot um, freaking Miami Golem, uh, Formula for a Murder, uh, Blast Fighter, Blade in the Dark. Uh, oh my God, the Barbarians! Holy shit, <laughs> Witchery, dude, <laughs> dude. He shot Lambada, but unfortunately, Lambava didn't <laughs> direct Lambada. Oh my! God. Oh, Hold the wow. fucking phone! Hold, the- folks, we need to. This is important. I knew there was a movie. There's a couple movies about Lomata, the Forbidden Dance, right? <laughs> this is a fucking Italian movie. Oh, my word. Mary Sellers from freaking Ghost House is in. What the fuck have I been doing wrong with my life? Jesus, dude. <laughs> it's a Brazilian Italian co-production. Oh, my Lord. Okay. I'm going to track down limbata and we will cover it on this show folks <laughs> and that will be a scene by scene moment by moment three hour epic episode what the front door it's a little teaser from see mary sellers play somebody called artista del cinema wow artista yeah. del cinema wow i'm losing my shit here okay <laughs> I think those are all the people in this movie i wanted <laughs> to talk about um before i drop uh Lumberto talking very specifically, although obtusely, about this film from a book. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to say about this uh, this trivial movie? Oh, well, there's one, um, you know, there's probably a few callbacks to uh, earlier, Jali, but the one that really stuck out, this is where I, like I said, forgotten the twist, but, you know, when you have um, this, that scene, basically, it gets revealed at the end where it's the old switcheroo or misremembered thing yes, or misseen yes. thing from Bird with the Crystal Plumage. 
when I was rewatching that scene, I think it kind of vaguely came back to me, but yeah, no, I certainly didn't remember the Scooby Dooners. And and it's weird that she actually she had time to the killer, she had time to scream, completely change out of her outfit and dress a dead body in her clothes. The two seconds. Yeah, between that and like say and was in Nightcrawler thing before it's she she's fucking on it or on something, I think. She can move around that quick. Magical lady. <laughs> so of course, um one of the the Bibles of Hello This is the Doom Show is uh, Spaghetti Nightmares by Luca M. Palmarini and Gaetano Mistretta. Um I don't know if the copies I used to be able to find this used really easily. I don't yeah. know if those have dried up and it's harder to find now. Uh, but if you can, or if you can find it digitally, because I don't think they're going to do a second edition of this, um, it's really fun resource. It's all interviews. Um, and of course, as always, we say, don't read the capsule reviews in the back until you've seen the movie, because it spoils everything. Terrible reviews in the back. Oh, yeah. It's terrible when they do that. I'm just, I'm looking it up on Google Shopping and there's something here. There's a used copy for about £30. That's not bad. It's probably not too bad. And I've just, I've never noticed the, um, is this the actual pro- the subtitle for this? Uh, Italian fantasy horrors are seen through the eyes of their protagonists. Yep, exactly. Right. Yeah. So um, the interviewer is talking to Lambava and uh, they talk a little bit about uh, photos of Gioia, which of course is amazing. Mm. Um, but then they go into the uh, discussing Midnight Killer, and he says, "So you're not fond of mi- you're not <clears throat> sorry, so you're not fond of Midnight Killer either." And Limbava says, "Some things in that film were done well, and obviously, when you make a film, you try to do it well as well as you can. Midnight Killer wasn't supposed to have been for the cinema, and so the whole operation was a mistake. So it was you know meant for TV." Oh, yeah, yeah, no, something, uh, it's a red Italian or whatever. Yeah. Producing that thing, yeah. So, um, we were trying to make a thriller with Serena Grandy. Oh, boy. Although at the time she was quite in vogue as an actress. So that's yeah. my theory, Simon, is that she was going to be Anna. Right. So it would have been a completely different film. <laughs> yeah. We would have seen uh, Serena's Grandies. <laughs> now, she could have been playing the wife. Because the wife, um, similar body type in terms of being very uh, voluptuous. Mm. But I'm guessing that um, since um, Serena was so popular, she would have been the lead. Mm. Mm. Uh, so uh, he goes on to say, perhaps the film ought to have been made differently. But the producers encouraged me to make it the way I did. Of course, it would have been better having Serena Grandy there to have had something a bit more rugged. Like, mm. for example, a hellish sabbat with goats and an altar and foul things of that sort. But that's not my type of cinema either. Huh. Okay. Further, yeah. He says, furthermore, the film was supposed to be for television, and so he had to remember that the film would be seen by a younger audience and had to respect that. Which, if you've seen the Italian horrors made for TV, they're fucking bonkers. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't know what the hell he's talking about there. But we also need to check the review uh, while we have the book open here. So in the back of the book, page 177, we have the review, the capsule review of Midnight Killer. It says, a maniac kills a lot of people, period. (laughs) Many theories overlap each other while the butchery goes on till the would-be climax. Okay, that's good. Didn't (laughs) spoil it. But here's, here's how they rate the film. An amazingly banal film. But for some reason, B is capitalized and anal is in parentheses. <laughs> it's B anal film. No, it's not. <laughs> and Simon, let's talk about how we like this one. And I'm going to go ahead and start if that's okay with mm. you. Go for it. This is a banal film. This is a film that honestly kind of doesn't feel like Lambava. Mm. I, I think that. Blade in the Dark, even though it's, you know, a good five minutes too long, maybe (laughs) seven or eight minutes too long, I feel like it's missing something. This feels like it's missing something, and it has its stylishness, especially when they go to the opera house, and the camera works amazing. The fog, of course, is great, but it falls a little flat for me in terms of 
It definitely doesn't have the zany shit like Blade in the Dark and Delirium have, because mm-hmm. those have some of the craziest um, English voice acting moments in them. I mean, if this had a line like, uh, well, you must be very perspicacious because that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Which I'm not even exaggerating that line delivery when I say oh, that. Oh, no. no. That's spot on. But this is a tight movie, I think. This is a freaking, uh, like, a solid movie. It's not boring at all. Uh, but it just feels like it's missing something. And I wrote in my notes, this isn't 98 minutes. Did Limbava make this? <laughs> um, Simonetti's score is good in spots, but I don't really care for the main theme at all. No, do you think it's a bit out of place, maybe? I mean, he certainly, certainly thought it was in Demons, because it wasn't in it. But... Did you ever see um, Mozart is the Killer? No. Mozart is the Killer is a 90s one that I don't... Was that Lambava? <laughs> Mozart is a Murderer. Sergio Martino? Oh, that was Martino! Okay. It reminded me of that movie, mainly because of the, the, like, the whole thing is... It sounds like a classical piece of music yeah, adapted yeah. into synthesized. Was music by Luigi um, Ooh Cecciarelli? I'm probably butchering that, but yeah, yeah. I, I like the music. I just don't love it. So overall, I th- I recommend this one, but it is not one I love. Mm. What about you? No, I get what you're saying. Um, yeah, it maybe his heart wasn't in it as much as some of the films, and yeah, I guess it doesn't fully hang together as kind of magically as something like you say, like Delirium or a Blade in the Dark. But but I like say from all the things I'd forgotten, I obviously hadn't seen this in a long time, or probably as many times as I thought I had. But revisiting it, I dug it before. I might even say I love it now. I don't know. There's just lots of little nice. kind of That's great. goofy scenes and just nice flourishes and stuff that um, just, yeah, I'd really forgotten about. So, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, one thing I'll give this a compliment about is <laughs> it definitely has some fun dialogue. Nothing oh, nothing yeah. super memorable. I'd have to watch it again and not be taking notes on the plot and actually mm-hmm. like paying attention more to what uh, people are saying. But, yeah. Um, oh, and I, I sent you a link just now <laughs> All right. Our boy uh, Carlo Vanzina, the director mm. who did um, like Nothing Underneath and Squealo. Granted, Squealo is one of the worst Gialli I've ever seen. It's it's a very it's a very expensive movie, but Squealo is woof. It's rough. Uh, but no, Christmas Vacation 2000 from 1999. <laughs> um, what the? Milanese and Naples people go to Cortina de Impazzo. On Christmas holidays, I'll uh, do that double feature with that in Lombardo. Holy shit! Yeah, that, this fucking poster. This like look like some people have been photoshopped or something into snowboarding over the top of some lovely lady who's crouched in the snow. I think I'm, I'm looking to see if uh, Lombardo is available for rent or purchase because this is important. This might be really important. Oh, the DVD is uh, is is from Australia. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna track down Lombada for us, folks. This will be like when Jeffrey and I did uh, the face with two left feet. Except uh, this won't be fun or entertaining. It'll be a fucking nightmare to, to cover. But it's the kind of <laughs> the kind of thing we need to do on Jello Jello. Who moved the tombstone? <laughs> Absolutely. So, folks, um, thank you for listening, Simon. Thank you for joining me. Oh, as always. Thank you. Man, that was a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, unlike last time, we have, we have no idea what we're going to cover next. Mm. Uh, we'll probably wing it or wang it. We'll definitely <laughs> Freestyle. Um, we'll have people search for our pipes. <laughs> Let me go and warm up some old soup. Dude, I'm going to freaking check out some nice ties. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Oh. This is The Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is The Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show. Use the email 
doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette.